Yes! I know I look different in this video than I do in all the other ones. That's because it's filmed on a different day. <laughs> Hello everyone! My name is Katie Carson. Welcome back to Royalty Soaps and another soap making video where we use exclusively uh, essential oils? Accentuational essential oils. <laughs> Let me rephrase. Where we use exclusively essential oils to fragrance our batch. I had like three things that inspired me for this soap. Number one is this picture on Pinterest. I saw this dress and was like, whoa, that would look cool as a layered soap. Also, all of those 1970s through 1990s summer sayings that you see on Pinterest and were probably on billboards, I wouldn't know because I was too young or wasn't alive. I see them more during the summer and big advertisers put them out and it's like, be kind, summer fun, super cool. And then thirdly, just the idea of be kind in general. I wanted to like make a soap inspired by that concept. I think that that's something that just kind of pulls people together during the summertime and I don't know I just had this like mental image of like kids in high school going to a lake or whatever and maybe there's like somebody who doesn't have a friend or something that are sitting there and they're being by themselves and then you're like hey we know you from school come be with us you can be part of our friend group and then that person who wasn't ordinarily having a good time is now having a good time that's sort of the inspiration <laughs> I know it's all over the place and this is the design so I was supposed to have a concept photo right here but um I forgot to add that in so you can see there's five different essential oils and there are some pretty additives on top including chamomile flowers, blue bottle flowers, and a pink Himalayan salt. I'm very excited. I hope this all goes according to plan and without further ado, let us make Be Kind Artisan Soap. I've already started filming. I haven't even set up my table yet. Also, that is not a bug. It is a blue bottle flower that has made its way in here. <laughs> I'm gonna need a stick blender and a blender head. I'm gonna need my lye water solution and a scrapey scrapey spatula. Wah! I'm also gonna need five, count them, five buckets. Some glovers to protect my wee fingies. These perfectly sized gloves were sent in by a member of the royal court and I am so grateful to him, I hoard them all for myself. <laughs> Cause they look really good on camera. I don't want them going to waste. Y'all, I just realized I haven't even mixed up my colors in oil yet. Y'all wanna watch me blend these up? Let me, let me scooch y'all in. Now, the little containers I am mixing in are not made of plastic. These are made out of corn. And yes, of course I will tell you where I got them because they are more sustainable and eco-friendly and why would I try to hide that? If the whole goal is to help the earth, why isn't this something we're sharing with everybody? So yes, I will tell you where I got them and I'll leave it down below. Now these colors are very, very, very specifically picked to try to get as close as we can to that dress. Now it's gonna be slightly off and I have a feeling that this one is gonna be slightly pinker. This middle color is a blend of of oleander pink and magic mushroom from Nurture. And I've never used the magic mushroom before. I just got it in and I actually came up with this color blend using their color blender on their website. As far as I know, Nurture Soap is the only mica website that has a color blender specifically tailored to their colors in cold process soap. It's an incredibly helpful tool and I wish all suppliers had that available because I just, I can't tell you how helpful it is. It makes my job so much easier. So Magic Mushroom was the recommended uh, suggestion for this and it's a gorgeous like dusty mauvey pinky brownie. It's kind of hard to describe. Now in here I have Aztec Gold. In here I have uh, I think Fire Cider? Firecracker Cider? Fire Cider I think it is. That's also from Nurture. Um, this is from TKB. This is from Mad Micah's. This is Blue Tide. Y'all know that's like my favorite blue. And then I have Black Oxide mixed with Ultramarine Blue. Blue, and these two are from TKB. Um, for me, 
TKB has the cheapest oxides. Now that might not be the same for everybody. And of course, I don't have a preference what mica people you use. All of them are good. So I just take some of my base oils to mix into these colors. It's typically a little bit messy. You can also just take any really, really runny oil of your choice. Don't use castor. That one will be thick and gloopy. <laughs> However, if you add in an extra oil that isn't in your base oils or your oil recipe, that will affect your super fat. There will be extra amounts of oils that are not saponified, which might be exactly what you want, but do be aware of that. I love it when all the air bubbles come up and it looks like a boiling pot, like a magic potion or something. All right, so let's blend these up. Here is the mini whisk that we have, okay? I have used every mini whisk under under the sun, okay? We've tried all of them here at Royalty Soaps. This is the one that we have found keeps the batteries the longest and is the most powerful. So I, I mean, and that's always very rare, like something that's more powerful also has longer lasting battery life. What? It's the best of both worlds. I'm pretty sure we get this on Amazon. I've said that before. I will try to link it down below. So let's blend these up. I always start just to make sure I don't have any uh, mica like poofing all over the place. I kind of blend it on my own first to get all of that dusty stuff at least a little bit incorporated. It just makes this part a lot easier. Yas. I love to do golds. Those are also my favorite. It's like, ooh, like I've melted down a gold brick or something. <laughs> Let's see what this uh, oleander pink plus magic mushroom looks like. Again, it's kind of looking like a dusty mauve color. Ooh. I was originally aiming for like a camel color, but I'm not mad and I'm not gonna change anything because I actually like this one better. Now for blue tide. I know this looks black, I promise it's not. And now we can begin. <laughs> Ooh, hey, y'all wanna see the emulsion up close? Hey, look, my face. <laughs> All right, let's just pour this in down the stick blender. Ooh, I kind of like being up close. I feel like you get to see more swirly detail. Ooh, that blue bottle flower making his appearance. Go away. <laughs> Perhaps I can raise him from the depths of despair. Come on. Ha 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 ha! Okay, let us blend. Okay guys, y'all have to let me know down in the comments below if you prefer that style of blending, you know, like up close. Now I have to split my batch into five portions. These pitchers that I am pouring my soap into are from Dollar Tree. I still try to use the least expensive pouring containers I can find if at all possible. They're a dollar a piece. It's kind of hard to beat that. Now the large container that I'm pouring out of is a lot more expensive. It's from Websterant. Um, I really wanted something that had a corner I could pour out of that was heavy duty. It's over 300 ounces of oils and I wanted something very, very durable. There are some things in soap making definitely worth splurging on in your soap making journey that just make your job a lot easier and potentially can make you go a lot faster. So I am going to scrapey scrapey out this big containy. I tell you what, over here at Royalty Soaps, we like to be efficient with the mundane, non-artistic tasks so we can spend a lot of time on the artistic tasks. All right, last little bit there. Because this is a layered soap, I'll be blending them up one at a time. I probably won't show you guys all of that. This video is gonna be pretty long anyway, but of course I'll show you me pouring every single layer. Fire Cider is the first color, so I'm gonna scrape out my little corn cup. And by the way, these corn cups can be used multiple times. They can easily be washed out with soap and water. And now I add my essential oil blend. There are five different essential oils in today's blend and let us mix it up with our stick blender. Oh, gorgeous. Let us pour it into our large slab mold from Workshop Heritage after this quick commercial break. 
All right, I'm gonna break the fall with my spatula just to avoid some of the air bubbles. I've gotten some air bubbles recently. I think some of it is because of the stick blender that I'm using, but some of it is also from me like pouring and it creating bubbles as I'm pouring. What a stunning color, Ooh. Now for the layers on this soap, I'm actually gonna create sort of like a hilly mountain range. It's not going to be perfect. It's gonna be, well, quite lumpy looking, kind of like high higher on one side, lower on the other side, and it's setting up rather nicely. I have quite a few uh, floral essential oils in this blend. Okay, we've got our desert mountain sort of looking thing here. Let's mix up the next color and pour it in. Next layer in, here we go. Gonna fill up those valleys first. There will be enough to cover the top as well, but I wanna fill up all the holes. Scrapey, scrapey out my little gold containy. And now I'm gonna try to do the same on the other side. Being a little more careful on this side because we already have one layer that's been sculpted. Boop, boop, boop. Go along the other side now. Just gonna, gonna kind of flatten that edge a little bit. I don't want it to look like a wave. Just hills, mountains, what have you. All right, next layer. The Magic Mushroom and Oleander Pink mix are next. And since I blended it, I've seen it turn like two different colors. So I'll be interested to see what this ends up looking like. We all know that Oleander goes a cream. It doesn't stay pink, but I've anchored it with that Magic Mushroom, so we'll have to see. Okay, let me shake this. And we're going to go towards, if I can be gentle enough, <laughs> we're going to go towards the wall. Gotta be really careful when I'm pulling this. You can already see I dipped a teeny tiny bit into that Aztec gold layer. And I have to say, whether or not this ends up looking like mountains is not that big a deal to me. I just wanted to do a different style of layer. Knock it down on this end a little bit. Maybe pull it up from the side. That's a good idea. If you want perfect and I mean like perfect mountain layers you can go shop at the soap shaper tool it's from love your suds she is a fellow soap maker and she makes a tour that makes perfect mountains it is 3d printed it is incredible all of her shaper tools are like super duper cool all right let me knock this down just a little bit all right time for the blue layer so this is the blue tide mixed with black oxide it has sort of a stormy look to it. Evil mermaid vibes. <laughs> Okay, this time we're going the other way. We're going towards the middle. I just started going the wrong way. <laughs> Come back, we need to go towards the middle. Okay, I'm ready for the last layer. Okay, final layer. This is the navy top. I'm so excited. All of these colors turned out beautifully. Oh, let me shake this down. It's so heavy. I am going to put a small texture on the top of this soap. This is Caleb's favorite texture, so I thought, why not? Why not do it for the hubbund? Essentially, you just take a spoon and you run it down one half of the soap towards the middle and then run it towards the other half towards the middle. And I'm dipping mine very lightly so I don't mess up that layer underneath, but you can do quite extreme dips in the middle there. This smells incredibly refreshing. To me, this smells like wild herbs, sort of like if you cut them and smell the stem, <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. Like if you pull an herb and you smell the place that you've cut it, it has that very like green note to it. That's what this smells like. I'm gonna do a double pull on some of these where the soap was thinner. Okay guys, time for the botanicals on top. I'm gonna start with the most contrasting colors, which would be yellow and pink. I picked these so they would stand out because I knew this top was going to be dark and I am gonna try to keep them in the middle. This is gonna be a little bit fiddly, especially with gloves on, but I can do it. So let's talk about be kind and the phrase and kind of the meaning behind this soap. I recognize that while I had absolutely marvelous childhood summers, that there are people out there that maybe summertime is a hard time for them. Maybe they've gone through trials during their life and summer 
is painful. And I don't know, I want to help those people create new memories. I wanted this collection to be something that everyone can participate in, no matter if you had perfect childhood summers. Like, let this one, let this summer be your best summer yet. Make new memories. Go out and do all of the summer fun things that maybe you didn't get to do as a kid. You know what? They have adult summer camps. They do. They have adult summer camps that you can go to and you do team building exercises and it's a lot of fun. Most anything you can do as an adult. You wanna take a day off and just eat popsicles and go swimming? Well, take a day off and do that. You wanna eat a whole watermelon or eat Lucky Charms for breakfast? Well, go to the store and get you some. I know the collection is very inspired by things in the late 90s and parts of the 80s, even throw backs to parts of the 70s. I mean, these colors in this soap are pretty 70s. But we don't live during those times. We live right now. And there's so many amazing things we can do right outside our front door. Here go the blue bottle flowers on top. Oh yeah. So yeah, basically I just wanted to say you can have an amazing summer. And on this channel, everybody is welcome. Everybody is a part of the royal court who wants to be. I'm sorry, I'm a mush bucket. But seriously, Seriously, I just want you to, you know, feel warmed and welcomed. I want to be kind to you. And now that all of my toppings are on, I'm going to spritz this very lightly. I very much do not want these salts on top to melt, but I'd like to limit the ashing if possible. Blues and blacks tend to ash quite a bit. All right, you guys, Be Kind is ready for her close-up. I love those little blue bottle flowers on top. They really bring the whole thing together. And we are smelling really, really fresh up in this place. So I am going to wait 18 to 24 hours and then we will come back and we will split this slab into loaves and cut the loaves into bars after this quick commercial break. Maybe, hopefully, please YouTube. <laughs> I am obsessed with this color palette. I'm gonna place my soap in this cutter, we call her Evangeline, and I'm placing all of the botanicals towards me so that when the wires come down, none of the botanicals get caught and end up leaving drag marks. It doesn't hurt the tops of my soap to do this. I know some people don't like it because it hurts the top of theirs, but I haven't had any problems with it doing it to mine. Are you guys ready for the reveal? Let's pull one out. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Do you guys get some hilly mountainside vibes over here? This color palette reminds me of Utah and I don't know why. The fragrance oil blend ended up being very garden herby type. When I picked geranium, I thought it was going to add like this very floral smell to it. I don't know why I thought that, but I totally did. And it ends up smelling more like tomato leaf. If you've ever smelled tomato leaf, it has just this very, very, very green smell to it. No complaints over here. I still think it smells good. I hope you guys enjoyed making this soap with me. I certainly enjoyed making it with you. And I have a funny question of the day for you guys. Would you rather go camping or glamping? <laughs> I would much rather go glamping. I, I'm not very durable outside. I, I melt. I'm also very, very pasty, so I sunburn quite easily. I don't know. I'm also just a wimp. To vote on the question of the day, all you have to do is click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Thanks you guys so much for watching today's video and I have a little bonus for you. I just looked outside my studio. I live and an enchanted world. Okay, first of all, let me say, I live in the suburbs of a small town. I do not live far out in the country on acres of land. I live on like half an acre in the suburbs. We have fences and all that kind of stuff. I put up fairy lights in my trees, my garden's growing. There are baby foxes 
in my backyard, in the middle of the suburbs. I'm not joking. I will show you video evidence. Four baby foxes in my backyard. Are they not the most precious thing you've ever seen in your life? They were tumbling around in the grass and the wind was blowing. They're a little bit skittish, but oh my gosh. I cannot believe this. I absolutely cannot believe this. She has the whole neighborhood and the mama fox trust my backyard. I feel so honored. I'm going to be so careful not to bother them. <laughs> it's so amazing. I could cry. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you liked today's video. I'm talking quieter because honestly, I'm afraid my voice will disturb them. I'm obsessed with this. It turned out exactly how I wanted minus this middle layer we might change that we might not it's starting to mellow out as it's sitting here and now it's growing on me be sure you do something fun for yourself today like i don't know i'm too busy thinking about foxes right now but whatever it is make sure it's something for yourself to relax you calm you inspire you and i'll see you next time so until then bye for now